Um, he told me that the meeting is being recorded. Thank you. <laughs> so again, uh, good morning to the audience. Um, uh, to our third uh, webinar in the Symfony context, the Seamless Integrated Forecasting System of DWD. Um, and uh, you can see in my big list of co-authors, these are, it's a big project, a research project, so we report today from a more research perspective uh, what, is, uh, what, is, um, what will be operational in the next five years. Um, that is the timeline. And um, to give you a short uh, content of this talk, what awaits you today, I will give you, as a short reminder, an, a, a quick intro into the Symfony system again. Um, then I will shortly speak about this year's performance of our first test system. So there is actually something is running daily, but not in operational mode. And we will look at how it performed this year. And this will be the bridge to um, the, uh, the actual topic of today, the main topic, which is how to, um, how to make optimal products of these new systems over the forecast horizon from 0 to 12 hours um, between our, our now-casting system and the numerical weather prediction we, uh, we, we set up. Okay, but first of all, a few words to my, to my person. My name is Uli Blahak. Um, I'm a meteorologist. I graduated, graduated in 2000 in Karlsruhe, and uh, now I'm a senior researcher at German Weather Service in Offenbach. Uh, and my research interests are broad. They are radar metrology, cloud microphysics, NWP models, and now casting. But I'm a researcher. I've never done forecasting myself, and that's an, uh, a new world which I'm entering with this project. Um, and I lead the Symphony project since four years now. But my interest and love for the metrology comes from flying gliders. You can see here a happy pilot in a nice airplane. Um, you can see also uh, what I love most is this um, big spectacular wave flights in, uh, in windy conditions in the lee side of the mountains with these lenticular clouds. And you can see a happy pilot in about 6,000 meters, of course, with oxygen. Yeah. But coming back to the profession, um, to give you a short intro into the Symphony system again, what, 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 are, what are we aiming for? Um, so the, the starting point of the whole idea of the project was that um, up to now, the range from 0 to 12 hours, the now casting range, and, um, um, and, the short, and the very short range numerical weather prediction, they are especially problematic in situations of uh, summertime convective systems. There we have the biggest problems in our warning business, I would say, in the summertime. And we wanted to improve, we wanted to, uh, um, to invent systems that um, improve the forecast on that time range, so very short time. Um, so what is the problem with our systems? At, at the moment, um, we run um, basically two operational methods, which is uh, the one is the now casting, um, depicted on the left-hand side. By the way, can you see my mouse? Uh, yes. OK. Yeah. So on the left-hand side, we will see, I, 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 will, I, I will skip through a few time slides and uh, time slices now. On the left-hand side, we see a now casting forecast. Um, in the, in the center, we see the corresponding observation, so that's the reality. And on the right-hand side, we, we will see um, forecast of a corresponding model forecast, numerical weather prediction. So when I go now through the time slices, you see that the now casting um, on the left-hand side, it starts from exactly the observations, and but it predicts only movement. That's what it's designed for. So it's, it's very, that, that is very cheap and efficient, so we can have it every five minutes, a new forecast. and um, uh, that, that's very efficient, but simple. In the middle, you can see that the um, that the observation starts to deteriorate clouds, so that the convective clouds, whereas the now casting doesn't. On the other hand, uh, on the right hand side, the numerical weather prediction model, it also deteriorates the clouds. That is realistic. But if we go back to the beginning, we can see that. In the numerical model, the clouds are not at the right place in the beginning. They are too strong, too many, depends on the location. So the, um, the problem in the NWP side is that the initial state is not perfect, but at a later time, it becomes better than now casting because it predicts realistic behavior, at least qualitatively, of the clouds. So we had these two systems. Now we have seen that both these methods, they have their specific problems. 
Um, and uh, apart from that, they were both separately developed by completely different teams in our service. Um, and there were up to now no common products of these two. So if forecasters want to, wanted to uh, compare now casting with NWP, they had to do it side by side um, in, in different windows. Um, a note on the numer numerical weather prediction, um, um, we start it every three hours. So we have new forecasts only every three hours for this high resolution model. And uh, it takes about um, one to two hours until the run is finished and the products are at your desk. So it's a very long waiting time also. So what in Symfony we, we, we try to improve both methods. So um, and in some way interlock them and uh, in the end produce really combined forecast products which look seamless for the users, a seamless movie of these forecasts, if you will. Um, now we look at the, at the, uh, at the system from a, from a time perspective, from a forecast lead time perspective. Um, uh, in the upper part, we, I have depicted uh, uh, the, the time frame of a now, typical now casting forecast, which we update every five minutes. Um, we have two versions from it. Um, we have a gridded precipitation and reflectivity now casting um, ensemble. That is what we are introducing, going from deterministic to ensemble in now casting. Um, on the other hand side, we have so-called cell objects, um, which detect from the radar images um, representations of single convective cells disregarding the rest. Um, and what we, how we want to improve these two systems is by giving them, them uh, besides the transport, on top of transport, giving them some tendency or life cycle information that makes the forecast a bit more realistic uh, um, over, over pure transport. Okay, on the other hand side, we have uh, the, uh, on, the, on the lower side, the, the uh, forecast range of a numerical weather prediction model, which is typically much longer, um, more hours. Um, we want to improve two things in this model. First, we want to uh, work on the initial state. We have seen that there is a big problem in this convective situations in the initial state. So how do we improve that? By just assimilating much more high resolution observations um, into the system than we did before. Um, we're working on the radar data, 3D volumes of reflectivity and radial wind, and um, mostly also on um, um, meteosat severely visible channels uh, during the daytime. This is to improve the representation of clouds and precipitation in the model. And then uh, for the forecast, we um, work a bit on the cloud microphysics parametrization, which is responsible for really generating precipitation out of the simulated model clouds. And we do that with our new ICON limited area model, ICON LAM it's called, and that at a grid spacing of about two kilometers. And this is also an ensemble system, um, which will be updated once uh, uh, every hour, not every three hours. That is uh, also a main improvement. So new, uh, more often new forecasts. So now um, you have these big, uh, massive chunk of data of two ensembles, and uh, nobody can really look at that. So uh, as a first step of uh, making you, uh, your life easier um, is that we generate as a post-processing so-called combined products. It is from, from two ensembles of forecasts, we make a one combination. It's a weighted average of both where the weight goes from now casting in the beginning to the um, to the model in the end of the towards the end of the forecast so that's a kind of information compression for you and that that will be the main topic of the the second uh, the third part of the talk okay these combined products they can be useful for forecasters for also semi automatic warning systems um, and also to um, in germany we have this uh, this federal and state level the distinction between uh, responsibilities, the flood warning authorities are on the state level, so we, uh, we have products for them. And uh, last but not least, to also to our um, smartphone app, the DWD One Weather app. Okay, but what does seamless mean in this context, really? So to illustrate this, I have an illustrative example from our workbench. Um, picture a movie, a picture to a forecasting situation on the left hand side that, that is now casting. You can see it predicts transport mainly. On the right hand side, we have a an, an corresponding NWP member forecast. Um, you can see that the cells are doing something realistic, but in the beginning it's, it's not perfect. So 
what we have in mind is the combination of both with this weight going from now casting to NWP gradually during the forecast, and that is depicted in the in the, the in, in, in the center. We will come back to that. Um, that that is an actual system we run, and we will come back back to that later. But that is the concept. Yeah. Um, now I go th shortly go through the different systems we are about to introduce in the next years operationally, um, starting with the now casting systems. And I told you that we have two different branches of now casting. One is this grid based, we call it grid based now casting ensemble. Here you, you can see three members. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. They are, uh, they, they, they are now casting forecasts and, and each is slightly different. Um, so, what makes the difference between these forecast members? This ensemble considers uncertainties given by the so-called scale-dependent predictability. That is, the fact that smaller cells are less long predictable than larger systems. That, that, you, that you know from practice and from, from experience. Um, and it was, uh, it was uh, explained in detail in one of the previous webinars. Um, as a second branch, we have our so-called object now casting, uh, and which we also um, turn into an ensemble. Object now casting focuses on um, on uh, identified cells that are closed regions of high reflectivity, um, and represents them by simple objects. Uh, objects can have properties like a, a centroid, a volume, a max reflectivity, and a polygon, which uh, is around it. Um, yeah, and. The, we, we, we turn this into an ensemble. This is, these are the red, um, um, the red uh, feathers, I would say, um, the red ensemble of, of forecasts. Um, and this ensemble considers uncertainties of growth, decay, and life cycle, um, based, uh, which we analyze based upon statistics from the past. This was also um, introduced in, a, in one of the previous webinars in more detail. Um, yeah, this. Um, I should also say that uh, these, uh, uh, this uh, grid-based now casting, which we call STEPS um, system, short-term ensemble prediction system, that is not unique to us. We um, learned a lot from other centers, Bureau of Meteorology in Australia, UK Met Office, Meteor Swiss runs similar systems. Yeah, um, what is these steps in more detail? Um, just a, a, another example, though, so that you can see that the members are really different. Um, yeah, here I show uh, on the right-hand side observations of radar reflectivity, and on the left-hand side three different members of a 20-member ensemble. Um, when the movie loops through, you can see that um, in the beginning um, all the members are the same, but during the forecast they become increasingly different, and that is the uh, uncertainty presented by um, by this scale-dependent predictability, which is analyzed from the series of the pictures in the past itself. From, for this type of now casting, we produce re reflectivity composites, we produce rain rates, and also one hour or several hour accumulations on a regular grid. And we have new forecasts every five minutes. And this is... Um, the main tool um, which, uh, which I will show combined products at the end of the forecast. So now I switch to what we do in the numerical weather prediction itself. Um, for this, let's have a look at our current operational system, which we want to extend. So we have our global model. It's an ensemble. Um, we have a so-called Icon EU nest, which is over um, larger Europe um, with a 6.5 kilometer resolution and also an ensemble. And we have our very high resolution Icon, LAM, Icon Limited Area Model uh, D2 configuration. That means two kilometer resolution over Central Europe. That is also an ensemble, and it makes forecasts new, new forecasts every three hours out to 48 hours. What we want to do in Symfony now is add a second instance of this Icon uh, D2 model. We call it Symfony Rapid Update Cycle book because it's updated the new forecasts come every one hour and not every t every three hours, but because to balance this in computational times, we cannot forecast so long, so only up to 12 hours. In this model, we especially take the focus on uh, on aggressive uh, um, uh, assimilation of these 3D radar data and severely visible channels. And this model will be the basis for forming combined products to the with the now casting for the end user. 
And as a second feature is because we started hourly, we have to be much faster in computing this model than with the other model. Otherwise, we could not have a real-time um, uh, real forecastings. Um, so we want to have available the model after 45 minutes completely done on the machine after actual date. And with the current model, uh, the Icon D2, it's, uh, you have to wait about 1.5 hours. Yeah, to make this happen, really, we need a massive upgrade of our uh, high-performance com high computing system we have in-house. Um, that will be done in, that is currently done in several steps, and the last step will be end of 2023, where we really have the full power to run the system. But now we have to uh, we have to live with smaller capacities and so um, uh, smaller uh, test systems. Yeah, but it's also a challenge um, in the model world. Um, when you want to combine it to observations, it's it's handy to uh, uh, to show model results also in the observation space. That is not looking at pressure fields, but looking at radar reflectivity fields or synthetic satellite observations. Um, that is why we um, why we uh, do all these uh, synthetic um, observations from the model. Um, in, uh, we reproduce radar volumes and composites, and uh, from this we can also detect um, cell objects even, and so we, we, we analyze the model in observation space and, and now casting space, and this is the basis for combination. So here you can see in the middle an, 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 an example of a model, of a result of a model simulation, three different members, um, same situation than before, three different forecasts. And uh, on the right-hand side, uh, I pictured what is uh, what, what uh, is, is a simplified um, notion of objects, just the region within these closed polygons where, where, where a cell resides. Yeah, and having these synthetic observations, this enables the seamless combined products. Only in this space, you can you can really combine now casting to NWP. Um, another thing is that if you do that, we can do a very direct verification, a comparison of the observations and the model directly in, in the metric of the observation. So radar reflectivity, um, reflectance from satellites, and so on. We can also compare now cast objects with uh, simulated synthetic objects of cells. That's very cool, a new way. Um, yeah, and also last but not least, um, this forward these so-called forward synthetic um, simulated observations enable a data direct data assimilation of these quantities into the model. That's what what we are also using, but I will not touch that today. Just one uh, how uh, one one word about how we generate these these synthetic radar volumes as an example. Um, we have a really efficient tool for that inside the NWP model, which generates um, every five minutes output of the full German radar network, synthetically simulated, 16 radars, 10 elevations each station. Here I, de I depicted only five um, stations with one elevation for clarity, but, uh, in, the, but uh, in reality we have all the, all the network. Um, we produce radar, radar reflectivity, which is the basis for the um, for the further combined products and objects and some other quantities which are not so important in this talk. But we can do that every five minutes during the entire NWP forecast in each model member. Yeah, and from this, I, um, from the radar reflectivity, we make composites and uh, these Conrad 3D uh, objects, um, uh, cell objects, so representing thunderstorms. And we do this with the, the exact same software as we have for the observations. Yeah, um, we ran these systems this year in a in a shrink, I would say, in a, in a reduced manner to to cope with the limited computing resources we have at the moment. But how did these ensembles compare today? Um, first of all, I wanted to show you uh, verification um, of our. A rapid update cycle against the Icon D2 today's routine in terms of radar reflectivity, because that is for Symphony. You should gather that for Symphony, radar reflectivity is important. So this score is the so-called fraction skill score. It rates um, uh, the exceedance of some thresholds, but it is graceful. It does not do that on a pixel basis. It is graceful around a certain rectangular region around each point. So that is called the scale. So if we make a, the, the correct forecast, but 
10 kilometers away, it is okay um, if um, if we are within this this, this scale. And uh, zero is bad, and one is good. Um, and uh, I depicted here just two different reflectivity thresholds: 30 dB set on the upper row, and 46 dB a quite high threshold on the lower row. And two different scales. Left column is 11 kilometers, so we really are picky about scale. And on the uh, right-hand side column, it's 35 kilometers, a bit more graceful. And you can see that um, black is our rapid update cycle score. So remember, uh, on the upper side, it's better than on the lower side. And the red curve is our routine. And you can see that on all scales with all thresholds, um, we beat the, the routine. We, 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 that, that is really a, uh, a massive improvement against the, the routine which we have in our symphony. So the reflectivity is much better, and with that also any synthetic observation, any Conrad 3D cell object is also better. Yeah, uh, on the other hand side, we look at the one-hour precipitation sum as function of forecast lead time. Um, same spatial scales, but this time two uh, uh, rain sum thresholds, one millimeter in one hour on the upper side, five millimeter on the lower side. And there you can see that we are not really beating the routine. Um, we are probably equal to a, bit, a bit worse this year, um, but that is mainly because the routine already is really good at picking up precipitation. So to beat that is really hard, and um, we are not. We are in a development phase with our Symphony Rapid Update Cycle, but of course we are not satisfied with that, and we are working on improvements. But one thing you can see is that. In the first one to three hours, we have a real steep decrease in um, forecast skill. And that brings me to the fact that what is the gain of starting the model more often than three hours? So going to one hour update. That is exactly the reason why we do that. And that is depicted on the next slide. Um, here, I change perspective from the time. Um, so on the, on the x-axis, you don't see forecast lead time. You see just time of day as you as forecasters are, um, are confronted with. And I show many different model runs, a series of forecasts, um, this fraction skill score again, um, for a comparison of our ICON D2. These are these three hourly lines with uh, uh, three hourly full lines. Um, and when you look at um, at the beginning of the line, so the leftmost line um, represents the six UTC run. But if you look closely, the line starts only at 8 UTC. And that is because we take nearly two hours to, to get the data to the users. So any earlier forecast does not have any value. Um, now the other, the, the dotted lines, they are our rapid update cycle, um, which we want to have uh, already after one hour. So the curve for the 6 UTC run on the left hand side, it starts at 7, because already there you, we can see the data. And now if, if we, in this um, view, compare the skill, we can see, say that at, uh, if you look at every time of day, um, the actual best available model is always the rapid update cycle. Example, um, 10, shortly after 10 o'clock, um, if we would not have the rapid update cycle, only this, this uh, normal routine model, we would need the 6 UTC run, and it has a skill of 0.7 about. And, but if we would have the rapid update cycle, we could already use the 9 UTC forecast, and that has a much higher skill, point, uh, nearly 0.9 in that case. So that brings me to the, um, to the, uh, to the, um, uh, the fact that the rapid update cycling really brings a benefit, just because we start the model more often and do data assimilation in between. Yeah, but now brings me to what brings me to combined products. This is the last verification plot. Um, here again, reflectivity for the same thresholds and scales as before. But now we compare really the now casting forecast, that is the black line, with the model, the red line, with the rapid update cycle model. Um, the black line, you, you, you see that it starts at, at 1, as it should be, because in the beginning of the forecast, now casting starts from observations and should be perfect. But then, of course, the, the skill drops very rapidly. And after one and a half or uh, between one and two hours, the model becomes better than the now casting. 
So now the idea of this combined product is to give you one seamless forecast that has the skill, that blends the skill from the now casting to the model world and looks to you like a, a seamless movie. That is the, the goal of this, this combined product. Yeah, um, other weather services, just before I show you the products, um, why is the combination of the now casting and the NWP is, is such a good idea? Because other services, they are aiming for pure numerical weather prediction based now casting. They want to improve the data assimilation so much that, that, that they have a perfect analysis and then they think that um, uh, model world will, the NWP will, will cover everything. But um, I'm, 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 I'm doubtful. I, I think, or I'm pretty sure that the skill of the NWP at these small scales and short lead times which we are aiming for will not beat now casting in the foreseeable future. So even really high resolution NWP with really fast forecast updates would be not sufficient in my view because uh, still, the exact timing and location of the small-scale convection triggering um, that really hits the limits of, of meteorological pre predictability and it would re really require really high-frequent data ass assimilation and forecast updates. I would say about uh, every five-minute assimilation steps at least with uh, five-minute new forecasts and no numerical weather prediction center uh, except maybe the Japanese K computer <laughs> is able to do that. Um, and then a, a, a different problem which I showed you in the one of uh, in, in, in the last webinar is that even if you have a really good analysis in terms of, uh, for example, indirect observations of radar data or satellite data, that often comes at a really price. So I showed you that there is this sweet spot. You, you cannot draw the uh, analysis of uh, the, the initial state of the model um, very closely to the to this indirect data. Because if you do that, you may be improving the radar reflectivity, but you may be deteriorating the underlying flow fields and pressure fields and temperature fields so that they get imbalanced. And that is, that is the problem. If you draw too, too close to the observations, you get a, a rubbish forecast because um, the model will not forgive you if you give it imbalanced uh, flow fields. Um, so. The data assimilation is, is uh, the task of data assimilation is to find a sweet spot, uh, pull as close as possible to the observations, but not so close as to deteriorate the forecast. So NWP analysis will never be perfect. Yeah, and last but not least, the computing times for such a really high update NWP would be much too long to run in real time, I think, for the next uh, decade. So. This shows that we need the now casting to bridge the gap from the observation to the latest available NWP forecast, as I showed you in the score plot before. And uh, what, what is feasible for us in the next years on our new, new machine is to have this rapid update cycle ensemble with hourly new forecasts. We can also have the five um, minute updated now casting ensembles, and we will combine that into five minute updates of combined products. Um, five minutes is really high frequent. We will see not, not each customer will really need five minutes, but if you have five minutes, you can thin that out always. Yeah, now I come to the question how to combine these ensembles. Um, on the upper side um, plot, you can see an example of a now casting EPS members. Um, on the lower side, the uh, rapid update cycle uh, EPS members as an example. And you can see that there are, if you want to blend one forecast movie into the other, you can imagine, um, first of all, for DWD, this is, uh, this is new. Um, and uh, I, I already mentioned that there are a, f a few systems and experiences at other national meteorological services from which we can learn. Um, Australia, uh, UK Met Office, Meteo Swiss has uh, these uh, such systems running that blend one into the other. Also, um, the Austrian colleagues from Zamk and maybe others which I forgot here. Um, at least at DWD, there are no final products yet, but we have different ideas and prototypes under construction, and that I will show you now. So, um, just to, to, to summarize before I go into the details. Um, what is the combination? Uh, with combination, we mean that we do an optimal linear combination of now casting and NWP forecasts 
to achieve a unique and consistent forecast for each location and time. The weight which we give them, I said it's a linear combination, is generally a function of the lead time and the weather situation. Um, we aim at two different um, uh, branches of this combination. One is grid-based. We combine the steps DWD now casting with the Symphony Rapid Update Cycle Ensemble. We do that for precipitation and rather reflectivity composites um, in two different ways. The one way is we um, first determine um, threshold exceedances and combine threshold exceedances probabilities for certain events. For example, exceedance of 46 dBZ. Um, the other way is that we try to combine the whole ensemble, that from 20 now cast and 20 NWP members, we get 20 combined members. That is very challenging, and uh, that is the second method. Um, last but not least, we try also to combine uh, these Conrad 3D objects from now casting and, um, and the, the, the rapid update cycle. Um, but scientifically, this is more far away, more distant for us than the grid-based combination. And uh, probably I will skip the Conrad objects today, but you, you already get the principle. Uh, the, the, the same principles uh, apply also here. Yeah, where are the problems? Um, of course, the challenges are that the structures in the Nowcast ensemble will not perfectly overlap and align with the structures in the model world. We have spatial and temporal displacements, area mismatches, and so on. Um, and it also, if you if you think about in terms of ensemble members, it will be really impossible to uh, really get the uh, uh, to, to transition member one of, of the model into uh, of the now, now casting into member one of the of the model. Um, you can do that, but it will it will be not optimal. So the optimal combination is depends on on the location and um, also on the forecast time. So we need a system that mixes the members in in a way that we do similar in data assimilation. Yeah, therefore it's uh, for this for this uh, to work. It, it would be very helpful if we could minimize the spatial and temporal displacements and the area mismatch, mismatches from the beginning, um, so that, uh, that that we can we can try. Because in the Nowcast ensemble, we we work on on uh, on the forecast of, of tendencies and also life cycle information with a certain spread, that helps. And in the model world, it would help if the initial um, uh, if the space if the temporal and spatial displacement errors would be as small as possible. We try this through a good analysis, I told you that. So, of course, it will never be perfect. Yeah, that brings me to um, a popular problem, which, which you can get if you have this, um, this combination. I try to picture this on the, on this, on the board. Um, so, imagine that we have a blob of precipitation from the now casting and another blob of precipitation from the model. But in our combined product, of course, in the beginning we say we want to have the model with a very small weight, probably zero. So if we now look at, at the gradual forecasting steps and gradual combination steps, um, now casting, if you have this spatial displacement situation and you have only a linear uh, weight, in the simplest case, if you do it dump, you have this fading in, fading out problem in that the now casting just gets a lower weight or a lower probability. And the model gets a higher probability. And in the next forecast step, The now casting cell just fades out. Oops, sorry, wrong color. And the model cell completely fades in. So you have a transition which looks really ugly. Just the, the now casting cell uh, gets off, and the NWP cell, which is on the at the wrong place, slightly uh, comes in. And that's that's something um, you would like to avoid. Or that's that's a, that's a, uh, one of the challenges to avoid this. Yeah, um, 
coming to the different um, combination products we, we, we envision, um, first of all, this uh, in the grid world, this seamlessly combined probabilities for threshold exceedances. Um, this works um, like uh, like uh, like this. Uh, on the left hand side is the recipe. On the right hand side, a result. So, if you combine um, uh, probabilities uh, as function of the forecast lead time, you first have to compute the probabilities for the NWP forecast that is on the left left upper panel, and the now casting um, probabilities that is on the right upper panel. And what you can see is that the now casting starts with a very red color that is 100% probability for the threshold exceedance and then gradually builds up spread, whereas the model has really more spread. And now when you combine um, the forecast with a, with a lead time dependent weight that is depicted on the, on the, on the uh, lower left side, um, then you get something, the, the, the probability gradually converts from the now cast probability to the NWP probability. That's one version of a very simple product. Um, how, how can this, this weighting function alpha, which is, uh, which is a function of, uh, of time, um, how, how to construct this? There are two ways which, uh, in, in which we do it. Um, one is you simply take the last three months, you compute, uh, you take a, a verification score and you rate both of the ensembles with that score. And the, real, the, the ratio of the scores gives you, uh, 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 from the ratio of the scores, uh, you, you determine the weight. So the weight will be high if the score is, is higher than the other method and vice versa. The second method is uh, more modern. You can also train neural networks, um, artificial intelligence, to automatically learn how to combine optimally so this alpha of t would be a generalized neural network function uh, as function of forecast lead time and weather patterns and whatever the network wants to learn. These two ways we are working on. Yeah, just to show you one of the, um, uh, th that it really works in terms of some score, um, this uh, CSRR score, conditional square root of rank probability score, uh, don't, uh, don't ask me what that is in detail, just uh, zero is good and w and one is bad, so vice versa to the fraction skill score. Um, you can see that um, if we look at the uh, now casting forecast, that's the blue line, it, um, the, the quality, the score increases, so the quality decreases very rapidly from the start. The model is on a, on a much lower quality level, but it keeps that level longer. And our combined products, these, um, uh, these colored lines, um, uh, Cyan, brown, and red, they just do what they should do. They transit from the now casting skill to the NWP skill. And that's what they, that, 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 it, it does really work. And you can have the situation that even in the, uh, in the time of transition phase, the combined product can have a better skill than any of the two um, single forecasts. That can happen. But it's not guaranteed, of course. Yeah, now we come to a combination of members. Um, there we implemented an idea by the Swiss colleagues, Daniele Nerini, um, called INTENSE, Integration of Ensembles of NWP and Extrapolation. Uh, and this is a very, um, a very neat method that uses a method from data assimilation to bring, uh, to transit gradually the now casting ensemble to an NWP ensemble. And, and how that works, I try to depict on the board again. So consider that we have our abstract um, depiction of a now casting ensemble. So each point in this cloud represents maybe one member. It's a conceptual picture. And on the other hand, we have our um, model ensemble. Each point represents a state, a picture, whatever. And now the principle of how to, I mean, what the now casting forecast does, it just in steps of delta t progresses forward. Delta t could be, for example, 10 minutes. So, and what we want to do is we want to bring gradually the now casting blobs of points towards the uh, model points. So we want to um, 
correct the now casting forecast towards the model, and that is really similar to uh, to the problem in data assimilation with reversed um, meaning. So in that case, we treat the model solution, the red line, as the observations where we pull the now casting ensemble towards. And how to do that? Um, usually, we do uh, short forecast steps, um, for example, 10 minutes. That brings us to a so-called first guess now casting forecast, and then we see okay that we have a difference between between now casting and the model which we want to correct. So we apply an ensemble Kalman filter technique from data assimilation to correct. C stands for correct the now casting ensemble towards the model, and if you do that in ten. Uh, in 10 minute steps or so, that's a typical time. Again, first guess forecast with correction. Oops. Now I ruined it. How can I go back? Yeah. Yep. And the next correction step brings the now casting closer to the NWP, and that's the principle. And how that looks like in reality, we can see here in the next picture that it's, uh, it happens to be the movie you saw again. So this combination is um, just a member one of a 20-member ensemble. Each member looks slightly different. That goes from a now-casting ensemble to an NWP product. So in the beginning, if the movie loops through, you can see it starts really from a now casting all the observations and then goes gradually towards the properties and uh, spacious um, um, patterns of the NWP. And each member does this slightly differently. And um, again, thanks for much help and advice from Daniele Nervini and Loris of Meteo Swiss, which helped us a lot in this method. Yeah, this is just another depiction of a more zoomed-in version of the of the case we saw before. Again, um, this combined members, member one, ten, and twenty, um, compared with the observations. And the take-home message is is that uh, if if you look through the movie, you can see that it's a plausible, seamless transition of the observations through the now casting ensemble to the NWP ensemble, and all the forecast members are different. And um, if we apply this method to really long time, here is a month uh, in June, May, June 2016, a very convective, very active uh, month in Germany. Every day anything else happened. Um, you can see that uh, this red ensemble member um, fraction skill score, one is good, zero is bad, over the forecast time, it really does what it should. It, uh, it, it transitions from a now casting score to the model score, which are the black lines, and uh, it works. Yeah, um, to, uh, to, to wrap up somehow, um, to come to a wrap up, I want to show you where our problems uh, this year have, have been. Um, here I show you a typically uh, a really bad, uh, not bad, but a really typical forecast which shows a, a large model problem this year. Um, here I, I, um, I show on the right hand side is an observed radar composite from uh, from some time in June this year where we had from the southwest um, uh, a big convective system from uh, France and Italy coming in, a score line with a large stratiform region um, transitioning into a mesoscale bigger system. Um, uh, on the right hand side with uh, with embedded uh, convective lines um, and what you can see is that the model um, got the convective core somehow right but it misses the stratiform regions so the outfall of smaller grouple and snow from this from this uh, massive updrafts um, that is a problem which we have seen in 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 many cases this year um, and this is a case of an example of a, of a situation with a low biased NWP P forecast. Um, the reflectivity costs are okay, but we have not enough stratiform regions in the model. So how does the transition from the now casting, which has the stratiform regions, into this um, low biased model look like in such a situation? To, to just show you where, where the problems could be. Um, 
I picture here um, that's the same day a, a time series of, of this combined product, just one member. Um, remember, there are 20 of them. Um, but it shows the typical behavior, what, what happens here. It's, it's a kind of fading out thing, not fading in, fading out, but fading out thing. Um, here, um, from top left to bottom right, we have uh, five minute steps. And you can see on the begin um, at, at the zero UTC, uh, a zero time forecast. Uh, on the top left, we have this radiform regions, convective course from the observations. And then as we gradually go through five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20, 25, 20, uh, 30, and 35, you see that we lose the stratiform regions gradually in the combined product until we end at something that looks like the model solution. So that shows you that doing this com combined product um, is really uh, depends on what you what you what you what you give it as an input. The better the now casting is, and the better the model is, the less problems you have in the in the in the combined product, and that really um, that really convinces us of our strategy to to develop these combined products not as a as a as a closed team, but work together with teams in now casting and NWP in a in a in a in a big team and feedback loop. Yeah, I skipped the um, convective uh, cell combination because the pr principles are very simple, and um, I guess the the slides will be distributed so you can have a look at that um, later. Um, to come to the summary, um, I showed you that we um, uh, that we design new op uh, optimally combined products from now casting in NWP up to plus 12 hours, which are especially um, useful for convective summertime convection. Um, what I did not show um, that we are also working on a further information compression of this combined ensemble. I mean, it's still 20 members and it's still a lot of data and we update it every x minutes. Um, so not to flood the users by with these data, we, we do a further information compression. Um, for example, we for the for the uh, flood authorities, we, we work on aggregation of precipitation sums for small river catchments in Germany, for all the river catchments that there are. Um, we do this in probability space for threshold exceedances and also for this ensemble member product. That reduces the data amount already. And then we further um, try to come down from these 20 or 40 members, which in, in the end we will have 40 members in a few years, but to, to reduce this, uh, this number of members, but not losing the information content, we do a localized clustering of the ensemble members to identify a few scenarios, for example, a weak and intermediate and strong scenario. And then the user has three, three members, if you will, instead of 20 with this, nearly the same information content. Yeah, and this system will come to life at DWD in the next two to three years, um, and I'm really uh, curious how that will work out. And with that, I mentioned some, um, as a last slide, just an overview that we have also external collaborations with universities, with other web services, and so on. Um, and that's, uh, that's my team last year. And with that, uh, thank you for your uh, attention. And of course, I'm happy to take questions in any form. Uh, thanks for the presentation. As always, um, you can ask the questions in the chat or uh, raise a hand, and I will unmute you. OK, I will open the chat and look at it. Yeah. I will point out any questions that we have. Usually it takes a few minutes to... Yeah, yeah. To yeah. If, if I hear such a, um, uh, a talk with, with something where I'm not fully in, uh, it takes time. You said you would share the slides. Of so course, you yeah. Can send them to me and I will upload them with the recording. Mm -hmm. You prefer PDF, I guess? Up to you. Yeah, okay. I'll produce a PDF and uh, mm -hmm. send it to sure. you. Sure, thanks. So slides will be uploaded next week um, with the recording. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just. Uh...
probably if, if there are no questions. Um, ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, you see it. Yeah. Thanks, Uli. Did you consider the possibility to work with vertically integrated liquid instead of reflectivity? Um, yes. Um, in the skip part, <laughs> I just go back. Um, we work with different object properties in the combination, of course. Um, in the object world, this is um, uh, uh, um, so, so a prototype of a, a, a convective uh, of a, of a cell-based um, ensemble forecast of single cells in these red um, footprints over the whole forecast time range of the cell. And that we can do for wheel, um, for vertically integrated eyes, for reflectivity marks, for uh, any property of the cell. Um, in the uh, in the um, grid-based world, we did not consider um, vertically integrated liquid yet, but could be a candidate. Um, but uh, um, yeah, you're you're right, Massimo. Maybe if um, if there are no direct questions, but probably. Um, uh, the, the participants could say a word if such combined products uh, think they think if they would be useful or how useful they would be. No one can talk at the moment, so if you okay. want to speak up, just say something and I will unmute you. I'm not seeing anything. So maybe you can. Um, one second. Yeah, uh, there's another question by Stefan Boinski. Um, if now casting and NWP based ensembles are far apart, could the combination not lead to a result that is worse than by keeping either NWC as a now casting or the NWP alone? Um, yeah, I, 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 that, that's what I try to, to, to highlight by this fading in, fading out problem. That is one example that, that leads to ugly transitions, of course, yes. Um, so that is why we think it's, it's key for this combined product to, to have the now casting and NWP as good as possible so that you minimize these, these displacements from the start. But of course, that will not, that will not um, uh, always work perfectly. Yeah, but that could be, yes. Um, another question from um, Matic Zafli. Um, I hope I pronounced that correctly or halfway. Uh, how the methods for constructing weight, um, the alphas, compare? Uh, one is from the past data and the other by using machine learning. Uh, did you maybe test this? Um, yes, uh, they are. Also, the machine learning obviously uses data from the past uh, for training, so in that they are not so different. But what you can do in machine learning is um, you can so from the performance, the neural network is usually better. Um, it's it's uh, also it's better in terms of results, and it's it's easier to train because as a as a trainer of the system, the human uh, does not have to think so much. So if you want to um, uh, if you want, to, if you would like to do, if you the 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 the, the, the machine learning by yourself, uh, so this is the climatological alpha. You have to think a lot about which parameters have an influence of this alpha and how to represent them. And by just pull, putting putting the data at the machine learning at the neural network, the network learns this by itself. So it's a bit easier to use. Of course, it's a black box, but. In our case, the results from the machine learning usually beat the results from the climatolo climatological weighting. And it's the machine learning is easier to handle in practice. Um, because also you can, uh, you can throw um, many parameters like orography of, or wind direction or other information, site, uh, other secondary information to the machine learning and it ingests them in some way. 
Um, but of course, that um, the, the drawback is that it's a black box and uh, uh, the, the, the training weights are often uh, difficult to interpret, but generally the, the quality is better of the machine learning. Uh, you mentioned another um, question from Stefan. You mentioned lightning as part of the rapid update cycle data assimilation. Um, does this envision the use of the upcoming space-based lightning imager for Meteosat third generation? Um, I would say yes. Um, in the beginning when we started with it, we didn't have in mind this because in Europe we already have a really good lightning observation network. So first of all, we started with this data. Um, but of course, this lightning imager, these are great data um, in, the, in the future. Uh, the lightning assimilation itself is a bit more problematic because it's very localized signals and uh, very un-Gaussian distributions in space and time. So that's something which any modern data assimilation system does not like. They like Gaussian bias-free uh, departures. And that's not the case here. So what we are doing, we failed a bit with direct lightning assimilation, but we now combine it with uh, the cell objects, so lightning is a property of a bigger cell object now and is assimilated in the context of the object. I am not seeing any more questions, so maybe as a closing point, or can you share the uh, contact of the email? people can uh, contact you if they I write it in the chat one yeah. moment. Maybe they, they come up with questions. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. Then I would say thank you for for qu quite a lively discussion. Um, and um, yeah, I wish you uh, a, a, a nice day. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and stay healthy. Thank you. You too. And uh, have a nice day. You too.